what do you wish more people understood about money? I think I wish that more people understood that money is an important but small part of a rich life. Hmm. Important because we don't often take it seriously. You know, we, we go to work, we come home, we get our paycheck, we pay our bills. We think that managing money means paying bills on time. That's not true. <laughs> a robot can do that. You don't need to be doing that. And we, we don't take it seriously. Like when I ask couples or individuals, what is your rich life? And they give me the same old trite answer. I want to do what I want when I want. I, want. I go, wow, yeah. that's so clever. I never heard that before. And then I go, okay, that's interesting. What do you want? And they just stare at me. Yep. That's not taking your rich life seriously. If you can't even articulate what you want beyond the word freedom or <laughs> travel, that's not taking it seriously if you don't know your numbers and you can't tell me what percentage of uh, your gross income you spend on housing. That's not taking it seriously if you don't know exact month and year your debt is going to be paid off. You know, a lot of us take the food that we eat from Trader Joe's more seriously than we take our personal finances. All right. So money is an important part, but it's also a small part of a rich life. And I wish people knew that when you see money, many people see spreadsheets and confusing terms and despair. And when I see money, I see a beautiful picnic dinner outside with your family on Saturday where you were able to splurge and get a nice basket so you could carry things. I see a trip to Disneyland with your family. I see a beautiful cashmere coat. I see whatever your rich life is and can be. And so money matters. Absolutely it matters. It informs where you live, what you eat, even to some extent who you are. But it's mm -hmm. also a small part of a rich life because there's more than just a spreadsheet. I've been following your work for a pretty long time, but... Your Netflix show was really a cut above. And I think your ability to get people to come to their own conclusions about money is unlike anything that I've ever seen. So I'm curious, what is the method to your madness? Because I could see any of the tips or tactics that you're using as broadly applicable for people who maybe have this stuff pretty figured out for themselves, but are trying to help friends or family members financially. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you what not to do because that's what I started <laughs> off doing. <laughs> I learned about money early on. And uh, in college, I was you know, I was reading all the books about personal finance and watching all the shows. And I created this one-hour curriculum. I would teach my friends in the dining halls. And I'd hear people complaining about their fourth overdraft fee. And I would say, hey, you should just come. You know, I do this free talk. It's banking, budgeting, saving, and investing. I still remember my four key categories printed on both sides of the page. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And then they would never show up. Oh. And there's a lot of subtlety in that. Why would somebody get excited? Why would somebody say, I know I need to do better and then not get help, especially when it's free? Mm -hmm. I found that absolutely fascinating. And I remember kind of like with the zeal of a new crossfitter <laughs> it's like you really need a roth ira after five years you can withdraw the principal and i could just see their eyes glazing over but i wasn't socially aware enough to know what was happening mm -hmm. i didn't know and in my view back then i was very linear it was like if you have a problem and you say you have a problem and somebody offers help there you go you have the three puzzle pieces they fit together done deal the irony is I was studying human behavior psychology. I just hadn't quite put the pieces together. And so mm -hmm. I think that when people try to help friends, I see a couple of trends. Number one, like I got this DM yesterday on Instagram. Oh, my sister is terrible with money, et cetera. She makes a whole bunch, but she's always in debt. They write me five paragraphs. I go, does she actually want help? Mm. And they're startled. If they don't want help, there's no magic incantation you can say that's going to change it. I can't even. If they come to me and they don't want help, there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. Second, what are the stakes? If the stakes are low, like somebody, a couple will write me, oh, you know, we're both Google employees. We make $450,000 a year and we really want to optimize our, the amount we make on our interest in our checking account. I go, who really gives a shit, honestly? <laughs> you don't. 
I don't. The stakes are low. You're not even going to really want to make a change because there's no real point to it. So do they want to change? What are the stakes? Those two things are, in my opinion, a prerequisite for any real substantial change when it comes to money. And that's what I look for.